Welcome to Real World AIP. I'm Stacy, and today I'm going over my updated supplement regimen. I did a video on what supplements I take last year and a couple things have changed so I just wanted to update you guys on them. I noticed using chronometer that I was falling short very often on vitamin E. I'm not getting a ton of vitamin C and also magnesium and calcium. I was very low like getting 30% of the RDA of calcium. So the supplements I've been taking, I use this ecological formulas vitamin C. It's derived from tapioca. I normally don't tolerate um, eating quantities of tapioca or cassava. It makes me bloat. I'm fine with this supplement though. No citric acid. So I just throw a little in the coconut milk that I use. It makes it taste tangy and I kind of like it. It's like buttermilk. The same with the vitamin E, which by the way, they start with soy, but there's no soy in it according to them. I don't react to it, but just so you know. They give you like 1,333% of your RDA. I don't need that much. So I just blend it up with a cup of coconut milk. And then I use it with the vitamin C in there too. And I use that in cold preparations like salad dressings or adding to a room temperature porridge. And then I just get a little bit every day. Instead of like a big whopping, I don't need that much. It makes these last longer too. So I just pour a bunch of coconut milk in here, like maybe. 10 ounces. I'll go through that in about five days making salad dressings and things like that. And then I put like like a half a teaspoon. That is 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C. And then this is over a thousand percent of vitamin E in each soft gel. So even if it took me 10 days to use this, I would be getting a hundred percent every day. Now this one, let me just kind of shake it up now i have vitamin c and e enriched coconut milk i've been taking the thorn vitamin d k2 forever when i got my vitamin d levels tested they were perfect my doctor was like keep doing what you're doing this is another one that like could have been derived from soy but isn't supposed to have soy in it i don't react to it digest gold i take these um as a digestive enzyme Last time I did a video on what supplements I take, I said, oh, I can't tell the difference. I don't know if I'll keep taking them. But then guess what? I was going through my old, old notes and I wrote, oh my gosh, these help so much. And I just totally forgot. And I got used to having better digestion, I guess. I don't know. When I first started taking them, I noticed a huge difference. I also take a magnesium malate, designs for health. The malate is not derived from corn, like citrate is. Um, so I did switch over from the magnesium citrate to malate, and I also take calcium malate, either Thorn or Designs for Health. I only take one a day. I am not a fan of multivitamin minerals. I don't want anything with synthetic B vitamins in it or anything like that. According to Chronometer, I'm hitting my goals for all the other nutrients. I only want to supplement with what I need based on my diet. Um, I don't do well with just taking all random supplements and vitamins. I always get some kind of bizarre reaction, even to like innocent B vitamins. So this has been working for me. So I'm going to keep doing it basically just supplementing individual things as needed. Probiotics, I was using Prescript Assist and then they changed the formula and then they were just gone. And um, I haven't found another soil-based probiotic that I liked. Dr. Sarah Ballantyne's really pushing this one lately. That's how I got turned onto it. It just made me like blow, like, so that's me. You might do great with it. So there were some positive reviews on it. I'm gonna revisit it because it wasn't cheap. I'm gonna revisit it and uh, couple months see if maybe something has changed in my microbiome that I can tolerate it. The other probiotic I was taken was the Therbiotic Factor 4. Um, this started making me bloat. Something changed in my microbiome last summer when I was experimenting with all the arrowroot and the agar and all the crazy stuff and I experienced a lot of bloating and then I started reacting to these so I think it was the prebiotic in them. So I will say though that I tolerate it totally fine in yogurt. I make homemade yogurt with coconut milk and that I'm fine with. So that's what I'm using this for, making yogurt. <laughs> and as always, my most important supplements are actually food-based. The liver that I eat every week, the oysters and clams and little eggs, the shellfish that I eat, those are so nutrient dense and I consider them supplements, more helpful supplements than any of these capsules I'm taking. And then of course, you know, diet rich in leafy greens and cruciferous vegetables and all the vegetables and all the colors of vegetables and omega-3s of course, which I get through salmon, wild Alaskan sakka salmon and other seafoods, sardines, stuff like that. Those are the best supplements. 
there's my update on my supplement protocol. I also want to make mention of a couple of smaller YouTube channels that you guys may not have heard of that I think are pretty good. They have AIP recipes. They are run by some fellow bloggers. They are um, Cook to Nourish. She does a lot of fantastic Indian foods and the Unskilled Cave Woman. Not all of their recipes are AIP, but they do have a good amount of AIP selection. So I'm gonna put links to them in the description box below, just in case you wanna check out some new stuff. And I also had a question from my uh, patron, Laura. She wanted to know, why don't I use flowers? Um, that's a really good question. <laughs> it's like a multi, multi-part answer. But the main reason is because they give me major digestive issue. Like every time I use the arrow powder, floating to the moon so i don't and i've always had reactions to cassava like i can't touch cassava flour so um yeah i'm not i just i don't tolerate a lot of the flowers i'm okay with coconut flour i'm okay with tiger nut flour so here we come to the other other reason i don't use the flowers that i can tolerate expense is another big one um also i feel like the less processed the better and I want to use ingredients that people can get, you know? I don't want to be like, okay, now go on Amazon and buy these 20 things I linked below. Like, all these exotic, weird things you can't get in the store. Um, I mean, I do that anyway sometimes. I'm like, oh, again, throw to powder. But, you know, I try, I want to keep it accessible. Overall, I think it's better to always just take a Whole Foods approach to things. You know, I'd rather make my pasta out of green bananas than out of arrowroot flour plus tapioca starch plus coconut flour plus... Blah blah, 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 too many ingredients, too much expense, too much bloating, blah. I don't know. Anyway, that's why. If you like this video, subscribe below. I put out new videos every Thursday. Also, you'll find me on Patreon where I post free clips almost every day if you want a little behind the scenes stuff or see what I'm working on in the kitchen or what I bought at the grocery store. If you are a $2 patron, you also get an exclusive recipe tutorial once a month as a thank you, but the clips are always free. And I hope to see you guys soon. Until then, be healthy.